Good morning and welcome this morning on the last Sunday of August. Can you believe that? We are at the end of August, next Sunday, the Labor Day weekend, uh, first Sunday of September. Uh, and to really make you feel depressed this morning, there's only about three more Sundays of summer left, maybe two summers left, and it'll be fall. Um, and we'll be going into the fall season ahead of us. I told somebody this morning at the West Point Church, that we'll be ready to soon be celebrating Reformation Sunday, and then we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. The holidays, I said, I didn't say Christmas, I said the holidays, and I haven't celebrated the Easter holiday yet. So it's going to be really difficult for me to go straight from last Christmas to next Christmas without anything in between. So we're glad you're here this morning as we gather to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day outside. We are glad in our area that the rains were not so severe, that we had great damage. Uh, we feel uh, sorry for those in places where there was destruction, uh, but we're very fortunate here that we were able to get through. The announcements for this week are pretty simple, as usual. I will tell you that the church office will be open from 9 to 1. Some, some, some Thursdays I do leave, or Thursdays I will leave early. I left early last Thursday because I needed to take care of some issues. Uh, but uh, from 9 to 1, I try to be here. Uh, if you're coming, let me know, and I will certainly be here. I also remind you that next Sunday is Labor Day Sunday. There is no session meeting next Sunday, which would normally be the session meeting. It'll be the Sunday after that because it is the Labor Day weekend. And the session on, on I think that's September the 13th. I don't have the calendar in front of me. That session meeting will be an online meeting. Uh, so those of you who are members of the session realize it will be online rather than in person. Also, in between that period of time, this week, sometime in the middle of the week, you should get your Clifton Messenger, the newsletter. It is being processed now. It would have been finished possibly uh, yesterday, except my computer went down yesterday, and we're fortunate to have a bulletin today because I could not get that computer back up until late last night, and I did some things to it I've never done to a computer, and it came back. And uh, it may want to disappear again, but it came back last night. Uh, but um, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be working on that uh, and getting the newsletter out this week. And also on the 9th of September, and I'll just give you a warning ahead, this will be our last one, will be our Vespers in the Park on the 9th of September. And I can't tell you what time because we've got to see when the sun sets and, and try to range around sunsetting, um, but the 9th of September, uh, be aware of that. I, I love to tell the story, a true story of a church where I served years ago and I couldn't be there that Sunday. They set the Easter sunrise service, but they did not take into time the time change. And they rose up, and it was still pitch black. And when they got to the cemetery, they stumbled over gravestones and over each other, and they had a dickens of a time uh, having that service. Well, the same is with our Vesper service. We don't want to be there after the sun goes down. We try to get there before the sun goes uh, down. So be aware of that the 9th of September. What a great day to worship God as we continue to try to make it easier to hear what we're doing with those at home, but also as we look at uh, ways to improve everything. Uh, uh, Victor and Karishma have done, and Nim have done a lot of work in putting it together. Our introit hymn today is number 49 in our hymn books, but it is printed in our bulletin. And if you're interested in a bulletin, by the way, we can send that to you, or you can get that online. It's called The God of Abraham Praise, Who Reigns Enthroned Above, The Ancient of Eternal Days, The God of Love, The Lord, The Great I Am, By Earth and Heaven Confess. We bow before your holy name forever blessed. And it ends that last verse, says, You have eternal life implanted in the soul. Your love shall be our strength and stay while ages roll. We praise you, living God. We praise your holy name.
the first, the last, beyond all thought, and still the same. In the midst of everything about us, it is good to know that the God of Abraham we praise, who continues to be the same. Listen today as uh, Julie brings us with our intro this morning. and let's call ourselves to worship. From whirlwind and burning bush, in still of night and in sheer silence, God calls the faithful in sacred world, beckoning us to turn aside, inviting us to stand on holy ground. God welcomes the faithful in sacred space. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is Take Up your, uh, take up your cross, the, la- uh, the uh, Savior said. Please see it. stand as we call ourselves to confession. Rather than us aspiring to holy ways, we set our minds on human things and become stumbling blocks to the work of the gospel. Let us confess the ways we have denied Christ's claim on our lives and disregard demands of discipleship. First, let's pray in silence. Let us pray together. God, who hears the cries of the oppressed, you call us to resist evil and hold fast to what is good, to take up the cross and commit our lives to the cause of love. But we are afraid to confront powers that privilege some and diminish others. We do not want to lose the security we enjoy. Forgive us. Open our ears to hear your voice, our eyes to look upon neighbors in need, and our hearts to respond with compassion, that we may follow the way of Christ. Amen. The one who urges us to overcome evil with good has already defeated every force that threatens to undo us, liberating us to love fully and freely in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Our second hymn this morning is God of Ages, Whose Almighty Hand.
faithful God, how blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sanctify us by your word and spirit, so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Listen to the word of the Lord. Our reading this morning from Romans chapter 9, verse chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 12, uh, verse 9 through 21, through the, through the new uh, reversed standard. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, preserve in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I, th I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but be overcome evil with good. Now our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28, and it's from the New Revised Standard Version. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forgive it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his, told his disciples, If anyone want to come, become my followers. Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father. Then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God.
Thank you so very much, Julie. As we go down to the river to pray, what a wonderful song that is. Uh, for those of you that remember the movie it was in, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou?, which was a great movie also. It is a good day as we come together to worship. We appreciate all the parts that people played in putting the service together. Uh, I mentioned Julie and the music, of course, and, and, and Carol being our liturgist, Jim, who often can sing for us. He's a little under the allergy season at the moment. We appreciate Krishna, who has read scripture for us forever this, this, this spring uh, as we've gone through this period of COVID together. Carol read from the gospel lesson and the epistle lesson, and both of those are very pertinent lessons as we think of them this morning. Uh, Peter was so featured last week and the week before when, when he pronounced with great uh, uh, assurance, uh, Lord, you're the, you're the Messiah, you're the chosen one of, of God. And, and Jesus was so pleased with what Peter said. He said, Peter, I change your name from Simon to Cephas, rock, Peter. And on this rock, I build my church. And he goes from way up here to now he's back at the bottom of the pit where Peter often goes in today's passage. Peter would have been a great political operative in today's world. He liked to make sure that we get the message out and we paint it right, uh, and he would have been an advisor. He could have been a great advisor, and he pulled Jesus aside when Jesus started talking about he was going to go and be crucified and face all of this. Peter pulls him aside, and he says, Now, Jesus, you know, we got a good following right now. We get lots of people listening to us. Don't go talking about stuff like that. You know better than do that. Let's keep the crowd enthused and they're going to grow as we go forward. And Jesus looks at Peter and I think he looks not with meanness. I think he looks at him. I, I think we miss that look sometimes when we read these passages. I think he looks at Peter with a little bit of a grin on his face and a little bit of sparkle in his eye. You know, during this COVID period, I can't see your grins on Sunday mornings, but I can see sparkles in your eyes sometimes. I think he looks at Peter and he says, Peter, get behind me. Satan has control of you right now. Don't you realize what you're saying and what must be done? If you want to be my followers, he tells the other disciples, you have to deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. You have to go crosswalking. The first thing to know that needs to be said today, that this is a very difficult truth and teaching from Jesus. We don't fool ourselves. We confess that right at the beginning today rather than pretending otherwise and lose our way to the end. To not confess how difficult this is honestly makes us more religious, more spectator than people who live the truth and walk the truth. The second thing needs to be said is at the end of our lives that Jesus is concerned about uh, that. He's concerned what the end is for us. The end, not at the last moment, but the end as the goal of our lives. You know, the Westminster Catechism says, what's the chief aim of men? It wants us to consider what is the primary purpose of human life? And the answer is worth remembering. The chief end of humanity is to glorify God and enjoy God forever. What is our primary purpose of life? Why do we come? What are we about? How do we arrange everything for that purpose in our journey? At this point, Jesus had come to a moment when he made one to make it as clear as possible. He said this last Sunday and the Sunday before. He knew his days were limited. And he wants to let his disciples know, how should you live life? And what should you do as my followers? Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously called this the cost of discipleship. And he said, it is not cheap. Let me tell you, today we make it very cheap. Today we make it very simple. We sell it. Now we, we say, well, we know these TV preachers and radio preachers. And, and I never thought in my life I'd be considered a TV preacher now that we do Facebook. But we know sometimes they sell the gospel. But we as churches are guilty of that too. We want to make it as simple as, easy, as possible. We want to make it an easy journey. We sell it it's just so it can be easy for you and easy for me. And that's not what it's about. The cost of discipleship is not cheap. 
We had the grandsons up this week to the house for a couple of days while their dad was at work and their mom had gone back to school, to the classroom. And we played lots of games. Cindy was to go over at times and be with my mom, and that left me in charge of two, a five-year-old and a two-year-old. And that's a scary thought. I thought it'd be easy until I was in charge of a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Fortunately, they didn't tie me to any chairs or any of that type of stuff. But we played lots of games. And one of those games was follow the leader. And I, you may remember playing follow the leader. I'm sure all of you played that at one time. The rules are simple. The leader gets to go wherever he or she chooses and everyone else follows the leader or you quit the game. You follow the leader. I, I did this when I used to student teach some. I found that I'd go, especially when they'd make me teach band classes, uh, I would go in and I'd think, how do you keep these kids still? Because um, I taught one class one time and they were to have practice and they purposely played off key because they knew I couldn't do anything about it, about to drive me nuts. I, that's the one day I had to have two excedrin when I finished class, because music off key leaves something to be desired. But I taught a group of seventh graders one time in a band class, and we played follow the leader. I said, today the goal is silence. We're going to practice silence. And their eyes got big. How do we do that? And I said, we don't say anything. We don't do anything. We sit quietly and see who can follow the quietest. And they took it very seriously. They got really quiet. The room got really quiet. They didn't even move as they sat in the classroom. The principal came up. Um, I won't mention his name. Many of you would have known him. He came up um, about 15 minutes later to see if we'd left the building because it was so quiet in that classroom following the leader. My grandsons uh, liked to play the game, and I was the leader. And I would try to walk funny or backwards or hop or whatever. You get the point. And as the leader... Uh, they would decide, they would follow, and they would do the same thing. The follower continued, they continued deciding how far they would go in trusting that leader. Uh, they'd have to trust the leader to lead them where it was safe. They'd have to trust the leader in doing things that could be done. If you're following, it's always a matter, when you're a follower of the leader, it's always a matter of trust and choice. Do I continue? In our cross walking today, we as Christians are playing follow the leader. Only the game is life, and it never actually ends except in death unless we walk away and refuse to play any longer. Jesus continually saying, follow me, and I will lead you in ways that lead to life. Along this way, you'll lose what the world tells you is important, and in the end, you'll discover what real life is, and you'll discover what's really important. We play this game in our lives in one way or another, whether we acknowledge it or not. It's a game of trust and a game of choice. For the followers of Jesus, the choice is always before us. How far will you follow him when the path leads in ways that we don't know or that we're unaccustomed or we don't understand? How much do you trust the one you are following, this Jesus? Peter couldn't fathom that his leader would go to the way of suffering, and he resisted it. He, his trust was tested by the way of the cross that Jesus set before him. How far are we willing to go? We're in a way right now. How far do we follow? In the game we played with the grandkids, and I played with the grandkids I realized that if your followers don't trust you, the game ends pretty quickly. The two-year-old didn't trust me at all after a while because he got boring and he quit playing. When one of the grandsons, the oldest son, Emerson, was the leader of the five-year-old and he started running and jumping as fast as he could, I, as a follower, had to walk away and say, I've had enough because I was going to die if I kept playing the way he wanted to play this game. Jesus often experienced that, and the same is true in our lives. Only our lives are never truly over until our baptism and our faith is made complete in death. The real question today is, who am I following? What path am I on? Do I have the faith in the one with whom I am walking? It may seem irreverent to call it a game because games are fun and silly generally, but even though this game is not silly and it's certainly not always fun, it will bring you to the deepest joy of all. Discovering God's purpose for you and who you are, who we are as a church. 
So we're back to that opening confession that's, that this is difficult. It's a difficult teaching. We find it strange to walk in the way of the Christ. It leads us away from self-preservation sometimes to the cross. It leads us to give our life away so that others may have life. And this is not a path we ordinarily follow. We follow a way that generally protects us. Jesus followed a way that led to vulnerability. Jesus followed a way that led to danger sometimes. Yet he promised that as we develop the capacity to trust him, becoming vulnerable, we will actually find our heart's desire. We will find life that is abundant. And here we might summon our hearts again to sing that old song, Trust and Obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We've now come to the point where we need, where we meet the true meaning of the cross. When we might desperately want the game to be over. We want to go back to normal. We want things to be the way they were. Where I am used to it. Where we're in control and where we get to be the leader. Our normal way is to hold on to the things that we want. While Jesus, our leader, takes us a path that requires us giving up what we want for the sake of what God wants for us. Discovering what God desires and directing our lives in that direction is the way of the cross. It will mean personal sacrifices. It will mean inconvenience. It will mean being vulnerable at times when we don't like it. My favorite theologian, I suppose, one of them is Soren Kierkegaard. He once said that there are more admirers of Christ than followers of Christ, and how true that is. You can admire Christ easily. You can admire Christ and still go on with church activities. You can admire Christ and come to worship and feel morally uh, superior or pleasantly uplifted, and you can go home satisfied only to return to life as it's always been with nothing changed, still admiring Christ. The choice is whether we will seek to be disciples or admirers. Will we seek to be changed by faith decisions or are we content to be admirers of Christ? To put it more bluntly, do we just want to talk a lot or do we want to walk a lot? It's harder to walk than to talk. If it all seems confusing and too demanding, you're in good company. The disciples thought the same thing, especially Peter, the leader. This is pretty hard stuff, Jesus. But Jesus didn't intend for it to be hard for us to understand. I think he wanted his disciples to know that everything, something sometimes is rather simple. He was going to die so that others may live. And that's the meaning of the cross. I love it as jewelry. I love it as symbols. But the meaning is that someone died so that we might have life. Somebody lost, so we might gain. Someone dies, that we might live. Becoming vulnerable means becoming courageous. And that's strange, really. Truth is, the more we embrace the way of the cross and the more we open ourselves to God's love, the more we discover not trouble in the midst of trouble, the more we truly discover joy and abundance. Following Jesus is a way of life that is shaped by letting go. It's hard to find life at its most purpose unless we're willing to give away that which we've been given in our Christ. What do I mean by that? Jesus tells us plainly. He says, when they ask you for your coat, give them your cloak. When they ask you to go a mile, give them the second mile. When they smack you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Now, he's not giving advice on, on ethical things you have to do immediately. We get sometimes so caught up in that about all of those things. What he is simply saying, that it is important that we give all of ours to Christ, no matter how hard the journey may be. That we find in this life what we call common sense, but let's find God's sense. Let us be cross walkers in this life. A good leader tells the truth. And Jesus told his disciples to watch out. 
He says, you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. It's a kind word of caution that we need to hear because we are surrounded by messages that say otherwise. We can gain all sorts of stuff, all sorts of power, all sorts of prestige. We can gain all of that stuff. Even as churches, we can gain all of that stuff. And we can realize that we are still empty, still looking for what satisfies our soul. For the followers of Jesus, the way leads to a cross. He told us that honestly. He told us truly. He told us completely. You have to learn to walk in this way. And when you walk in this way, when you crosswalk, you'll find life abundantly. We cannot follow this way in our own strength. And if we could, we'd only end up with the illusion of power and self-preservation. We would be self-righteous and isolated from others, and there's lots of that today. In churches, in faith groups, and other places. There is a better way. It's the way of the cross. It's a game in which the goal is God's purpose for your life and living into that purpose. It's a way of faith, trusting not in your capacity to get it right or always to do well, but trusting the one you are following, the Christ. It's by following that we learn to follow. We learn to walk by walking. We become courageous by being vulnerable. We find life by letting go of life only to find God's life given back to us. It's strange and wonderful. It's peculiar the way Jesus sets before us what we are to be, what we are to do. We all follow someone. We all play a game. In the end, it comes down to this. Who are you going to follow? Who is our church going to follow? What is the reality of your crosswalk, of our church's crosswalk? How serious do we take that Christ and what he calls us to be? Let us pray. Hear us now, Lord, we pray. Help us as a people of faith, we pray this day, to take serious our crosswalking. To take serious what it means to take that up. And go as you call us to go, where you call us to go. Hear us today, Lord, I pray. It's not about how popular we may be. It's not about how ticklish our words may be to ears. It's about the truth of what you call us to be. Hear us, I pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and share our affirmation of faith together today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning as we gather as crosswalkers, let us be aware that there are many joys and many concerns of our church. Uh, there are those today, particularly we know, that are sick. Uh, I think there are, are maybe four new cases of COVID in Greenbrier County. Uh, there are uh, I think there are four, Now I may be wrong about that. I know that there have been, somebody told me this morning, four deaths from the Springfield incident now uh, in, in Monroe County. We want to remember uh, employees there. We got a, an email this weekend from Teresa about her sister who works there that has tested positive. Um, let's keep all of those folks in our prayer. Let's be in prayer for those who have tests being run and be in prayer for those who have surgery. Be in prayer for many unspoken concerns that all of us have that the Lord knows in our hearts who and what they are. Let us be in prayer for our church as we move forward this difficult time, as we move forward as crosswalkers, looking at what we need to do as we bear our cross. Let us be aware of those uh, unspoken concerns of people uh, who, who have needs 
uh, that we don't know about, they share with the Lord. Let's be aware of those who hurt and suffer. And we also have joys of celebration, new life that has been seen, um, new directions being gone. I think we today especially pray for, uh, I, I think of Donna, but I think of others who are going to school and will start back to school soon, and our teachers and our staff and others who are there. Think of our children who will be going back the 8th of September. Uh, all of those uncertainties, keep them in our prayers as we go forward. Is there speci- are there special concerns someone would like to share today? Right. But uh, they had really good news this week. They've been working as temporary employees for the Forest Service, U.S. government. Right. Since they moved out here, they finally he got a permanent position. Oh, that's great news. That's great, great news. news. Great news. A permanent position working for the Forest Service in California. Uh, and there's a lot of fires and a lot of heat in California right now, and a lot of COVID cases too. So keep them in our prayers as they go forward. Great news. Others today, let's have a word, a prayer of intercession as it's printed in our bulletin. If you'll respond, hear our prayers, uh, and respond not just as words to be said, but as truthfully saying and praying, Lord, hear our prayers. And we'll follow that up with the prayer that we are taught by Christ, our Lord's, the Lord's prayer. Let us bow in prayer together. With one mind in Christ and one heart in the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the church, the universal church, and the holy church. Make us faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, unashamed to stand with him and share his cross, unafraid to offer our lives in love for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the earth, the mountains, and valleys, and rivers, and streams, and oceans, and seas, and all that is contained, both living and, and, and surviving on this earth. Let this wondrous world you have made continue to blaze with your glory. Do not let it be consumed by greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray for all nations. Teach us not to act with vengeance and violence or to respond to evil with evil, but to live in peace and overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray for this community of Max Welton and this community of faith. Help us to extend hospitality to strangers, to contribute to the needs of the poor, and to live in harmony with our neighbors Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our loved ones. You know them each, O Lord. Today, we pray especially for the residents, the employees, and the families, and the friends of the Springfield Nursing Home. We pray with joy of jobs that have been obtained. We pray for those who've lost loved ones, and we pray for those who struggle with their health. We pray for those who are in hospitals and at home and those who are home fast. Let us rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, sharing the grace and love of Christ with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enable us, O God, by the power of your Spirit, to live our lives in a way that is worthy of the gospel, to the glory of the name that is above all names. Jesus Christ, our Lord, help us as we pray a prayer taught by our brother Jesus, which says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, the offering will once again be placed in your seats. You may put it in an envelope or lay it in the seat. Uh, At the end of the service, a designated person will collect that offering. I remind you also that you may certainly send that in by uh, electronic mail or uh, uh, regular mail in whatever way you get to here. 
as you support the church and the mission design it has been designed to do. As the offering is collected and put in the seats this day, please remain seated while the doxology is played today by Julie. Lord, we have prayed, we have listened to the music played, we have read scripture, and we have given of our tithes and offerings, and we ask, Lord, that you take each of these things we've done and help us to use them wisely in ministry with you. Let us be crosswalkers this day, Lord. Let us take up our crosses. Let us take up the task you've given us and follow you more completely in the journey of life. Hear us today, Lord, as we thank you. Hear us today, Lord, as we celebrate. Hear us today, Lord, as we worship. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our final hymn today, our hymn to send us out of this place today, is a hymn that we've sung many times this season. I don't think you can ever sing it enough. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, to all the world adore his sacred name. It says, come Christian, swallow where our Savior trod, the Lamb victorious, Christ the Son of God. All newborn servants of the crucified bear on their brow the seal of Christ who died. O Lord, once lifted on the glorious tree, your death has brought us life eternally. So shall our song of triumph ever be. Praise to the crucified for victory. Lift high the cross. Let us stand today as Julie plays our final hymn. Let us bow for our benediction. The blessing of the one God, Spirit, Son, and Father be with you now and always. Alleluia. Lead a life worthy of your calling, giving glory to God in all things. Amen. <laughs>